So, I'm behind when it comes to most video game series, Fallout, Arkham, Wolfenstein, and Assassin's Creed is no exception. With over a dozen games in the series, unless you've been playing since the beginning, it can seem impossible to catch up. October 5th saw the release of the latest game in the series, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and I decided for once in my life to get ahead of the curve and pick this game up release weekend and knock it out in a trio of Twitch streams. My overall thoughts on the game, coming from someone who's only played AC3 and Black Flag, and not any of the controversial RPG style games, is that Mirage is an awesome Assassin's Creed experience. This time we play as Basim, poor street thief turned hidden one. I've put about 25 hours into the game completing the main story, all available contracts in the bureau, and the 40 Thieves Deluxe Edition mission, which if you're into historical easter eggs, is a must have. I'm going to try to keep the review spoiler free and mainly focus on gameplay, setting, and mechanics, especially because the game just came out and people need a fair shot to play it for their own. I have a few notes though and we'll get into those a little later on. What I will say is it follows a similar narrative of revenge and assassination while also standing up for what's right and looking out for your family and friends. This seems to be a similar theme throughout Assassin's Creed. There is a twist at the end that I had to look up and have explained to me. I thought I was stupid, but evidently it does make more sense if you've completed the 100 hour Valhalla, which I have not. Whether you get it or not, the explanation is easily available and I can confirm that. While we're on the subject though, something I absolutely loved about this game is the absence of the immersion breaking modern day narratives of the older games, some of the ones I've played. I don't know at what point they dropped the heavier animus stuff, but I think the change is one of the best aspects of the game. You have all of Baghdad to explore without being pulled out at random into some modern day office building to do a stupid little fetch quest that quite literally wastes 10 minutes of your life and is point this this alone ladies and gentlemen made the game 10 times better for me it's something i absolutely hated about the older games was constantly getting pulled into the modern day setting and away from the assassin's creed experience baghdad the main setting of the game is incredibly done the packed streets tight alleys crowded markets all do a phenomenal job of immersing you in the 9th century city the game doesn't have much outside of this, besides Anbar and some smaller settlements outside the walls, as well as Alamut, the stronghold of the Hidden Ones. This area, though, is only available during certain parts of the game, and as far as I can tell, there's not anywhere that you can travel back and forth freely from, you know, Baghdad to the Hidden One stronghold. These smaller provinces and pockets of civilization feel just as alive and immersing as Baghdad itself. There's a lot of desert as well around to ride through and explore which I think looks absolutely incredible, especially at night. Something about that nighttime desert atmosphere it just looks incredible in this game. Graphically, this game is stunning and one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. Other than the faces, yeah, I don't know why and I'm not sure if anybody else feels this way as well, but a lot of the faces in this game I feel are very off quality wise given the surrounding game if that makes sense like everything looks super beautiful almost like a cgi movie then boom faces look like they're from a 2012 ps3 game bro and i'm not really sure why that is i really want to be careful with this next part too because i really don't know if it's like a cultural thing or a period thing but the lack of graphical quality on the faces definitely isn't helped by the constant just grunting from one character to another and i'm not sure why they do it so often but it's just kind of awkward and i'd prefer some chat gpt written dialogue over uh, uh, uh. it's just like really awkward i don't even know what to say about it when it comes to being an assassin though in this game, Ubisoft has you covered, and leaves little to desire. As advertised, the game does prioritize stealth over all out violence. When playing in a stealthy manner, I found many tasks fairly easy to complete, but when I would lose my patience or get spotted by a random guard and go into a fight, I would usually end up either dying or having to retreat or using up a lot of valuable tools to end the conflict. 
I went into this game with full knowledge of the heavier stealth gameplay and found it really enjoyable, satisfying, and a thrilling experience. When you enter that flow state of stalking through bushes, chucking knives at heads, and pouncing down upon guards like a jungle cat, it really scratches the I want to be a ninja itch that every guy has. And don't let them tell you they don't. The gadget selection here I have to praise as well. There's not too many to keep track of, and there's also not a whole lot of redundancy. Every tool serves a unique purpose and function, and there were times throughout the 25 hours I spent in the game that I went looking for each individual tool, thinking, man, I need a smoke bomb to get out of here right now, or a noisemaker would really help to divert that guard's attention so I can shoot a blow dart at his buddy. Highlights for me, of course, smoke bombs are always broken in these games, and they're a get out of jail free card, or I bit off more than I can chew, and I need to kill all these guards before I die and lose my mission progress. So, of course, I used smoke bombs when I needed to, and also when I just wanted to, you know, grab a key or something, and I didn't want to have to fight a bunch of guards or go around and sneakily kill them. I would just throw down smoke bomb, get the guy that has the key, and uh, get out of there. Throwing knives I used all the time, and that's not hyperbole. If you tuned into my stream for two seconds, chances are I was using one, and the upgrades to make the body disappear is godlike, and once I unlocked this, I didn't change it the entire game or even experiment with the other options. Each tool comes with three unlockable tiers that give more ability to that tool, offering a lot of customization and options that can really make an area done with one setup feel completely different than an area done with tools decked out with different modifiers. The last tool I'll highlight, I guess, is the focus glitch thing, which there's been a lot of conversation about. My take is a couple. It's really not hard to just not use it, so if you're one of those people that feels it's immersion breaking, then you can really just not use it, and it's no problem, and I can respect that take. I didn't use it for most of the game because in all honesty, I sort of forgot it existed, remembered toward the end of the game, and used it a few times because I thought it looked cool more than necessarily needing it. If you haven't seen it, you can freeze time and select multiple targets while not detected, click fire, and Basin will glitch to each target, assassinating them instantly. I thought it was pretty cool, but can see why people feel like it's giving Basim like superpowers, but I don't think it's too much different than EDQ, so do those people also not use EDQ? EDQ's the bird, by the way. EDQ is awesome in my opinion and came in super clutch, although sometimes frustrating, I completely appreciate and respect the marksman mechanic. It definitely adds some difficulty where you can't just freely scout the entire area until you sneak in and neutralize the marksman, and they aren't even present in all the areas, mainly just more important targets keep the shooters around. It was just frustrating occasionally when I would try to click into EDQ to scout an area and then he would instantly get shot down it's like, oh, marksman. I haven't played any of the AC games with the Scout Bird before, and I wish I had it in games like Black Flag for objectives, so I appreciate Ubisoft for uh, EDQ. Moving on to the combat system, this is something I didn't like. I know the system isn't new to this game and they've been using it for a while now, not sure when it came in, but I really found myself missing the combat of Black Flag in AC3. The trigger bumper lock on real hit counter gameplay just really isn't my thing. It doesn't feel as intense or thrilling as just spam button mashing counter and attack in those other games until cool animations popped off. The animations that Basim gets here are pretty sweet though, and the sound design is crazy. Somebody took the slicing sound from Fruit Ninja and dialed it up to 11 in this game. I just don't like the R1-L1 combat system. Let me know down below which system do you prefer, the new style or Black Flag era combat. For me, it's a no-brainer. The swords and daggers in Mirage are pretty good. I like the upgrade system. Each weapon has three tiers, similar to the tools, but instead of different modifiers unlocking, it makes the individual modifier that the weapon has stronger, as well as increasing the actual stats, such as damage. I've heard you can swap around these modifiers and weapons, I didn't personally use this, I just used whatever weapon modifier I wanted with that weapon it came on. Aesthetically, outside of the deluxe edition weapons, I didn't actually think anything was too impressive or stood out, which is kind of a shame because I would have liked to see some more unique designs and features, such as like the glowing blue of the deluxe sword and dagger, which I did have, and I pretty much used most of the game. 
I'm always going to complain about weapon variety as well. I think I complained about this in Black Flag, and I would if I made a review on Assassin's Creed 3 too. I can understand why they took away the club from AC3, because that was really broken, but I don't know why we can't get a bow with limited arrows or a spear, dual daggers. Maybe it was more of an intentional narrative choice. I know there's more weapon freedom like this in games like Origins and Valhalla, which is why I wanted to see it in Mirage. Like, if it's in those games, why isn't it in this one? The outfits follow a similar system with having a modifier on them, and each tier makes that modifier stronger. I enjoyed this system, but when it comes to aesthetically, the various disguises and outfits are just alright. Like the weapons, they're kinda mid. I'd be lying if I said any of them really blew me out of the water. Other than the Iron Man one you get for returning all the shards, that one is crazy. I did like the original Basim Assassin outfit for this game though. It was stylish enough, but I kinda found the 40 Thieves disguise disappointing and a bit of a mixed bag in all the fits and disguises overall. The Deluxe Edition horse though might be worth the $10 just for it. The missions and contract structure here are almost flawless. A couple notes I do have is I did say almost flawless. Some of the nostalgia driven tailing missions I thought dragged a little too long. They weren't difficult, just slightly boring. I found myself just sitting on a perch waiting for an NPC to stop looking around a lot. He was looking for me in the streets, but Buddy didn't know I was above him. The contracts in comparison to at least Black Flag I thought were perfect when it came to volume. When I played AC4, I felt like the contracts and side assassin missions went on forever. Even in some degree, AC3 side missions and freaking naval missions I felt like dragged on a little too long. Mirage does this much better. I found myself a little surprised there wasn't more contracts or side missions. Surprised but not disappointed. I enjoyed the plate that I was given. Not too much, but just enough to be satisfied. The main story is okay. Again, no spoilers. I didn't think it was anything incredible or mind-blowing. More of a run-of-the-mill AC story, and that's not a criticism, just a fact. The gameplay environment makes the game worth playing alone. And the story is worth enough playing along through as you explore Baghdad. I didn't expect it to be a philosophical, existential, timeless piece of art worthy of thesis paper breakdowns for generations to come. So I wasn't really disappointed at all. More expectations met, so GG's. Some quick character notes though. Basim is alright, a little stiff, and reminds me of Connor in that aspect. I know I haven't made a full review of AC3 and put it on YouTube, but I did beat it over on my Twitch, and I found Connor very uninspiring and kind of boring. I want my assassin to be a badass, like Edward, and Basim just doesn't slang that energy if you know what I mean. In Black Flag, you really had this amazing journey of Edward growing up. When he was younger, he was a lot more sarcastic and funny, and then you see him kind of mature throughout the game, but at all times, the gameplay, as well as his dialogue and character, feel like a badass, and I just don't feel the same with Basim. Basim seems like that guy that would stand in the corner all night at the party with the same drink half full talking about on snap last night was a movie. Then you trigger an animation during combat and it's like wow he just turned that guy into a full fish fillet like he was Deadpool. It just doesn't make sense to me man. Maybe the problem's me though and I need to respect the silent badass a little more. Roshan is awesome. One of my favorite characters throughout the game. I want whatever she's smoking just to try it at least once. Not as great as Achilles, but she may be cooler than Atabai from AC4. Nahal is surprisingly not annoying for a side character in a video game that pops up out of nowhere asking you to drop what you're doing and do something else. I feel like this is a rarity in video games, so I have to give a shout out to Ubisoft for this. Her story I found to be interesting, her character was intriguing, and I didn't find her annoying at all. Which is great when you don't find the side characters annoying in video games, so shout out to Ubisoft for that. As for the rest of the characters in the game, I thought they were all okay to good. I will say the main person that you take down, I really didn't think they did a great job of making you like hate them or want to take them down really it was just kind of like oh this is who we're going for all right levy a little criticism against them for that i think there could have been a little better establishment of the villain and why we don't like them but all things considered my complaint is that the villain doesn't have an epic story and it's not an epic villain but 
you can't get that in every single game so you know i'm really complaining about nothing the game also has a lot of the chess enigmas and books to go around and collect the various collectibles that are common in assassin's creed games this one seemed to me to have a little more puzzles and challenges to obtaining the collectibles which were enjoyable sometimes frustrating but that's somewhat expected the sync points live up to at least my standards in an assassin's creed game being better than three not as great as four but come on the bahamas is prettier than the desert so it's gonna be like that for $50 standard edition, $60 deluxe edition, and well over 30 hours of gameplay if you're looking to see and do everything there is to do, or achieve that platinum trophy, this game in my opinion is more than worth it. I had a great time playing Assassin's Creed Mirage, and if you want to hang out with me while a game, check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash wildbigskies, where I stream most of the gaming that I do. I give it an 8 out of 10, and my updated Assassin's Creed ranking, one being the best going back, Black Flag, Mirage, AC3, and I look forward to playing more Assassin's Creed games. Black Flag is going to be hard to top given my love for the Pirates of the Caribbean, and that's literally the game. Mirage makes up for the, my lack of knowledge and period history with incredible environments and thrilling gameplay. And AC3 sort of stumbles in at third. A couple months down the line, I don't look back on it the fondest. I love the Re Revolutionary War setting. But I don't know what it is, something about the game just didn't do it for me. I appreciate it if you watched all the way to the end. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and comment Roshan's a MILF so I know that you're a real one. Peace.